Broadcasting once again from the pool house, mix room, and gecko sanctuary, c'est moi, your music maitre d', Scott Velasco, Scotty Vico, Horde Lord, Father Time Signature, etc., etc. For the first project of the semester, you are going to need to use Avid Sibelius, and I have good news. If you're not interested in attempting the Sibelius certification process, which would earn you an industry certification as an Avid Sibelius user, you can get through these first few projects using the free version of Sibelius called Sibelius First. Sibelius First is available for Mac and PC, desktop and mobile, although it is the opinion of this guy that the mobile application is inferior to the desktop version and the options for using Apple Pencil with iPad are basically worthless. If you're wanting to attempt the certification process, contact me. I have a few great resources that'll help you study. And of course, keep up with your assigned readings from Sibelius Fundamentals 1. I'm including the download page for Sibelius First and all other versions below this video. You will need to have an Avid Master account and a free iLock account to access this software. I linked in last week's course materials a few Avid videos to get you up and running with Sibelius, but in this video I'd like to show you two great methods of note entry. This comes from lesson 7 in your book, which can be found on page 124 of the e-reader or page 101 of the physical copy. The first note input method is using your mouse. This is the method that requires the least knowledge of music notes and pitches. Since we've been focusing on note duration during the first few weeks and have not yet begun to discuss pitches and note names, this might be the entry method you find most understandable. However, it's also the slowest way to enter notes on the staff. The first thing you'll need for all of these entry methods is to be viewing the keypad panel. The keypad is a small floating window that contains pages of note durations, accidentals, accents, and other flourishes. Everything we'll be using in project one can be found on the first page. If you do not see your keypad, or if you ever accidentally close it, it can be accessed going up to the, here to the top of the screen. This area is called the ribbon, and it's divided into sections called tabs, just like internet browser tabs, and groups, which are blocks of information within each tab. It is important to note that the ribbon condenses or expands how it displays information based on the size of your window and your screen resolution, so your ribbon might look a little different than mine, but rest assured, all of the information is still there. Go to the View tab on the right of the ribbon, and you'll see a group called Panels. Take a second to check and uncheck each of these so you know what all is in here, but ultimately, I want you to uncheck everything except Keypad. Go ahead, take a minute and do that. And if ever your keypad disappears, this is where you will go to find it. To enter notes with your mouse, begin by pressing the N key on your keyboard. N will put you in note input mode. You can tell you are in note input mode because your cursor turns blue. Now, select a note value, such as a quarter note, eighth note, half note, or whole note in the keypad. Once you have selected a value, this note is loaded into the mouse. Place it on the score by clicking where you want it to appear. Anytime you want to get out of note input mode, press the escape key twice. To get back to note input mode, press the end key again. I should pause here to remind you that there's a lot of basic navigation information in the Avid videos I posted in week three, and I'm not going to go over making selections, undo and redo, or any of that. That information can be found both in those videos and in lesson five of your fundamentals book, which is page 90 of the e-reader and page 67 of the physical copy. Being able to comfortably zoom in and zoom out, make selections and undo mistakes is going to be essential information, so take extra time to make sure you understood that material. Since our first project focuses only on note duration, 
Let's enter all of our notes on the third space from the bottom of a treble clef staff. This is the space called C. It's easy to go back and change the position or pitch. If you have just entered a note in the wrong place, use the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard to adjust it. If you are adjusting a pitch you entered previously, tap the escape key twice to exit note input mode, zoom in and select the note head, which will turn blue, and then use your up or down arrow keys to change the pitch. Even if you don't know anything about music pitches on a staff, Sibelius will play the note for you as you adjust the pitch, making it easier to create melodies. The second note entry method I want to discuss is called step time entry. Step time allows you to ignore your mouse and use both hands on your keyboard for note entry. Like before, you will begin by pressing N for note entry mode. This time, however, you will use the numeric keypad on your computer keyboard to make a note value selection. If you're on a laptop that does not have a numeric keypad, you will want to connect an external keyboard for this exercise. I have a few I can lend out for the semester on a first come, first served basis. You'll notice that the keypad panel is laid out in the same shape as the numeric keypad, so you will use the corresponding key on the keypad to make your value selection. Numeric four is a quarter note, zero is a rest, and so on. To place the note on the staff, use QWERTY keys A through G to enter it on the corresponding note space. Again, for the purposes of the first assignment, you will always choose C. A couple quick details that might be helpful to you. First, if you want to begin note entry anywhere other than the beginning measure of the staff, you can make a bar selection by clicking the white space in a bar where you want to enter note entry mode. After you've made your selection, press the N key to enter note entry mode. Second, using step mode entry can be a fast and efficient method to work, especially if you always keep your right hand on the numeric keypad and your left hand on the QWERTY keyboard. All right, tune in to my next video for details about project one and examples of how to complete it. Until then, it's time to bounce. This is Scotty Vico, fading out.